So two months before my A-level exam, I did a mock and I got a B in it and uh, <laughs> it came as a really big shock to me because I was weak and also I just my target was an A star and also I needed at least one A star for my Cambridge offer <laughs> although that could have been for my other subjects but it just really hit me you know in the heart that I only had two months left but I was scoring a B in a mock and those were questions that I probably have seen before so um yeah so I did cry a lot, although I said I didn't cry, I didn't cry that much. Um, so today I'm going to share with you all that I did to get an A star in math. The last two months from when I got the B in the mock to the A star, I think that was the most crucial part. I did work hard all year round, but I really think what I did in the last two months is a game changer. I 100%, 200%, 300% believe that it will also make a big change to your grade as well. Especially if you're taking the autumn exams in two months. Is it two months? But obviously you could work hard and put in the effort, but I think if you implement these steps, then it would make a big change. Getting an A star isn't an overnight effort, but it could could be a two month effort. This message kind of goes against everything I stand for which is working consistently hard throughout all your A levels and I still stand by that but I think if you really really tried you can change your grade really quickly. Alright so you might be in two positions so you might either be just starting your A levels and you have plenty of time or you just finished year 12 and you still have plenty of time or you're doing your A levels in like a month or two and you need a boost to your grade. All is good. The difference is basically how much effort and sleep you're gonna lose and how much time and hard work you have to invest into preparing for your A-level math exam. So yeah, let's go into my tips. I'm gonna go through some general tips and then my golden tips, which are my two month level game changer tips. But the general tips are also very valuable and are things that I consistently did to make sure that I was, you know, way into the grade boundary. So first of all, on the exam day, I <laughs> opened a question and it was like a seven or eight marker and I looked at the equation and I was like, what? Like, I couldn't answer the question because I didn't know the format of the equation. But the funny thing is, is that morning I actually read the specification and the specification had that equation on it and I read it, I remember reading it. But because I didn't study into the specification, I only read the specification and that's why I didn't remember it and that's why I lost seven to eight marks in my exam. So my first tip is to study the specification. If I had took time to really study the specification, then I would have probably been able to answer that question, but I didn't. And the thing is, I thought I had studied the specification. So I did highlight the specification, I wrote notes on it, and I read it lots of times. And I thought that was enough, but actually I didn't commit a lot of things to memory, and that's why I fell short in the exam as well. So I did lose the marks, but it didn't make a difference because I did get an A star in the end anyway. I saw a comment asking me if I got over 90% on my UMS and um, no. Honestly, like, do you know, um, I'm like that student that, uh, works hard but doesn't, like, excel, you know? Like, I can't be Albert Einstein. Honestly, I think even if you just scrape an A star, obviously you want to be well over the boundary just to be safe, but even if you just scrape it, that's an A star. Like, nobody's gonna check who, like, Cambridge? Like, I, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, basically, don't, don't worry about UMS marks. My marks, uh, let me, let me show you, actually. My raw maths marks exposing myself as usual the first pure paper i got 74 out of 100 the second pure paper i got 73 out of 100 and the third stats and mechanics which um i got 80 out of 100 which is funny because i sucked at that but overall i got 227 which is only 10 marks above the mark scheme not that uh, safe but kind of safe so yeah go through the math spec multiple times and really study into it and highlight and remember the things in it in stats and mechanics they really like to ask definition of like population or senses the answer is just in the spec it's just worded in that exact same way so if you just remember that then it will really help you a long way the second tip that I have for you guys is to read the big textbooks and the summaries really thoroughly so just going through each page and this is quite a passive exercise but it's really good to make sure that you don't miss any information so these first two tips are kind of just to ensure that you don't miss anything off the spec and that you've covered everything so that you have a good foundation doing this is good and it's also very easy but it refreshes your memory all right third tip is 
proof book. So making your own proof book is really useful. And do I have a treat for you because I'm going to scan, well, I'm not gonna scan because I don't have a scanner, but take a photo maybe of all the proofs that I have here, which is all the proofs that you need. So if you just remember all the proofs that I have in here and you just memorize this and then write this down in the exam when the proof comes up, then marks for you. I remembered every single one of these and its explanations for the exam. Because of the specification, they ask for certain proofs and that you should know how to prove certain things. So I just memorized those. So basically these proofs are like the foundation proofs that you should know, but obviously they can also give you a very rare, not rare, they can give you a proof which you've never seen before that you're just expected to work out. I wasn't very good at those, but I remembered all the proofs in that book and that did help me with solving other proofs as well. But yeah, basically learn them because the spec asks you to. The thing is to take the large data set seriously but not too seriously. The large data set is actually only free marks on your exam ever. Now this is verified information from my brain from my memory but I don't remember the source for it but I will insert that here if I find that. So basically what I do recommend for the large data set and what I did is I did remember the things that I needed to know for example the location of the places but at the same time if you're lacking time and you're not so good at other aspects of maths in the specification then I would really recommend focusing on those first. Free marks is actually really important because it's the difference between an A star and an A and an A and a B. If you do have the time then definitely study into the large data set but if you don't then just skip it out. Tip 5 is making your own textbook. I'll show you what I did. For each topic I would write down the topic and then I would write down all the formulas and the key things that I need to know because you just don't remember these things or at least I didn't and actually this was so helpful for me because I could refer back to them every single time I did a question and I forgot a formula and there's just so many formulas and so many equations that you need to know so I just did it on pieces of paper okay now for my life-saving grade boosting golden tips so I wanted to show you guys something which I did during my A-levels Ta-da! <laughs> This is my A-level maths progress chart, which is from Taylor Tutors. So my school got the Taylor Tutors program for free because we fell into, I think, like an unprivileged bracket that they wanted to help with access. And this is not sponsored, but honestly, Taylor Tutors is the best A-level revision resource there is out there. I'll talk about that later, but basically what I did is that I wrote down the exam that I did at the bottom, and then I stuck a sticker on the mark that I got for that paper, and you can see for some of them there's two stickers and I will get into that. So what I did in those two months and what I wish I did from the beginning is that firstly I did one exam paper in timed exam conditions and then I marked that exam paper very very thoroughly using the mark scheme. Then on a separate piece of paper I wrote down how many marks out of how many marks that question was for each question and I wrote down the topic of the question as well and then I would get a cute sticker and stick it on the progress chart on what mark I got for that paper. And then using the separate piece of paper with all the marks and topics and also my exam paper that I just did, then I would go through all the topics that I lost marks on and I would work on practice questions and I would go back to the textbook and fill in gaps in my knowledge to make sure that I know how to answer the question and I know where I went wrong and how that question is actually answered. So the goal of that is to understand the topics and the questions that you couldn't do. And then I would mark the stupid simple mistakes that I did as well in a separate piece of document so that I could remember on exam day to remind myself not to do those stupid things. I found that I kept on repeating a lot of the same mistakes so it was really good to record those down. And then after at least 24 hours of not seeing that exam paper again, repeat that exam paper and do not move on until you get the grade that you need on this progress sheet. So you see it kind of fluctuates a lot and that's because, well, I don't have a reason but the bottom line is where I did the exam paper for the first time and then the top line is when I did it for the second time so basically if you're aiming for an A star then you should be getting 90 or above if you're aiming for an A then at least 80 or above B then 70 or above and basically what this does is that you can see that the first time that I did the paper it goes up right and eventually I was scoring so high on the first time that I did that paper that I didn't need to repeat the paper again. So then after you've scored at least 90 or above on that exam paper then you move on to the next 
last exam paper and you repeat the process. Okay, hear me out. So basically the reason behind this is that if you can't even score like 90 or above in an exam paper that you've seen before, how are you gonna score like 70 or above in an exam paper that you haven't seen before, right? And I said before that in both of my pure papers, I scored 70 or above and that's enough for an A star. So that was what I was aiming for. So if you're getting a really high mark of papers you've seen before, then you'll definitely be able to get a higher mark on the real exam paper as well. And I promise that this will completely change up your revision and also help you score the marks. It's a really, really long, tedious process. And yes, it's not the most fun to repeat a paper. And especially if you have got like 89 or something and you have to repeat the whole paper, it's really frustrating. But I did it because I trusted the process and it worked. You, you see that it worked, right? And I really recommend this because it's the most effective way of using your past papers and you really don't want to waste the past papers. Maths is very much just application and being able to spot an equation and knowing the steps to solve it. So when you repeat the paper until you get 90 or above, you're really solidifying the memory but also you're showing yourself that you actually learned something and that you now know how to tackle that question. And then eventually you get through so many papers and you repeat it so many that you can answer most of the questions and then ta -da, a star <laughs> So let me talk a little bit about Taylor Tutors. So once again, not sponsored because I'm not that cool. They do charge for their program, but honestly, wow. So my school's math department was kind of lacking. So I, I had to do a lot of self-study and Taylor Tutors really helped me a lot with the self-studying because not only have they made their own practice papers for you to do, they've also collated all the past paper questions from the old spec and the new spec for every single topic that is still in your spec. So if you're struggling on like integration, then you just go on the integration tab and then ta-da, all the integration questions and then you just practice. She also goes through every single topic in detail and teaches you how to do it and also goes through exam techniques and everything like that. So I really think they are a great resource. Very, very fortunately, I got to use it for free. I do think you can do without the resource by just doing the practice papers and those golden tips that I told you. Those golden tips, by the way, are completely from Taylor Tutors. I started doing this method because of Taylor Tutors. So yeah, that is the secret to how I went from a B to an A start in two months. Obviously it's kind of clickbait lol sorry because I worked hard throughout the whole year. I did consistent revision but I do mean it and 100% true that those two months made the biggest difference to my grade. I actually felt like I was getting maths. Like I felt like I was understanding maths and that is so rare. So this is really, really something really happy for me to share because I feel like just getting a subject is amazing and this is the best, most effective and quickest way of understanding maths. Obviously you shouldn't neglect all the other tips as well because you should definitely still read the textbook, do questions, understand topics and things like that. And the presumption is that you have learned the content in class and that you can do math to an extent. So if you do try this method out then let me know in the comments below if you're seeing any progress. Okay so that is all that I wanted to share today for my maths A level. I hope this helped. Hope you can put this into practice because there's nothing more satisfying than seeing your grade go up because you're revising in the right way. So yeah the weather is really nice so I'm going to go chill. Thanks for watching. Bye!